This is an explanation of operation and complexity of the Hopcroft curve algorithm. The Hopcroft curve algorithm takes as input a bipartite graph and produces a maximum cardinality matching. A bipartite graph is one in which the vertices can be divided into two sets, u and w, and the edges of the graph pass between the two sets, but not within the same set. A matching is a pairing, i.e. a vertice in u is paired with a vertice in w using one of the edges provided. Therefore, the set of these matches will be a subset of E. Here, we use green lines to show a match. And maximum cardinality means that we want the most matchings we can. Before we go into the algorithm, I'd like to define a few things. Firstly, a free vertex is a vertex with no matching edges connected to it. For example, in this diagram, the top left vertice has no green lines connected. An augmenting path is a set of edges so that you can take it in a sequence to move around the graph. Looking at the algorithm, we can see that the first line sets this matched edges equal to the empty set. Then in the loop, M is incrementally increased and then is returned at the end. The first line of the loop generates the maximal set of vertex disjoint shortest augmenting paths. We know what an augmenting path is, and so here we have a set of the shortest of them. Dis vertex disjoint means that none of the paths share a vertex. Maximal doesn't mean that it's the biggest, but it does mean there is no larger set of the which this is a subset. Then the set of edges that we've just generated is exclusively awed with the current matched edge to produce the new set. We will be using this example, bipartite graph, to explain how the algorithm works. Looking at the algorithm, first we set m equal to the empty set. Back to the code, we see that the first line inside the repeat is to find our maximal set of vertex disjoint shortest augmenting paths. And this is how you do it. The first thing is that we take all of the three vertices on the left hand side that is in the first case going to be all of them because m is empty so there are no matched edges and we're going to use them as sources for breadth first search this breadth first search is special in two ways firstly on the first level we will only be using unmatched edges since these are three vertices, that is all that is connected to them. And then after that, we will alternate between using matched and unmatched edges. Secondly, we will terminate once we've reached a level where we have found a free vertice, which because of the matched unmatched thing, will be on the right hand side. We then collect all the free vertices on that level and put them into a set ready for the next operation. So then, let's try that out. Let's take all the three vertices on this hand side, which is all of them, and do breadth first search, first using unmatched edges. So A can get to E, F or H. B can just get to E, C can just get to F, and D can get to all four of these nodes. We then check the termination condition, and it's true since all four of these are free vertices. So let's put them into our set. The next stage is to do depth first search on each of the vertices in this set F. This depth first search is also special in two ways, since it also uses the matched unmatched pattern, and also when we have used a vertice or an edge, we delete it. This makes sure that the set of paths that we get are vertex disjoint. So let's try that out. We're making a set of paths. The first path we're going to look at E. And we're going to use this edge to get to A. And then we're done. Remember we have to delete all the nodes and edges that we use and also the 
vertices left free hanging. Next, we're going to be looking at F. And we, from F, we can get to C, and we're done. To the F. And then G. G, we can get to D, so we delete that one. But now H is left hanging, we can't get anywhere with H, so we have to delete that. And deleting H. We now have finished our set F and we have our vertex disjoint set of automating paths. This could be bigger if we'd chosen our paths smarter. However, the algorithm is trained to do that, so this is just a maximal set. The next step is to take all of the paths that we've just found and union them to get a set of all the edges and then zor it with the current matched edges to get the new M. This is just, because this is empty, it's just equal to that set. Let's update that at the top. And the first round is complete. And so our new M will look like this. Now to do the second iteration, we take our three vertices again, which is just B this time, and we do our breadth first search using first unmatched edges, so we can only get to E. Now using matched edges, so we can just get to A. Now we can get to F, or we can get to H. Do our termination check. Yes, H is a free vertice. F is not though. So when we collect our set of free vertices, just as H in it. We now do our depth first search using the matched unmatched. So our P looks like H to A, A to E, E to B. Remembering to delete all the nodes and edges as we go. We now have our set and we need to update our M. So let's do that. New M equals is equals because this edge is in both sets, it's not including the answer, so it's just looks like that. We then repeat the loop because there's no free vertices, the breadth search search is empty, then the depth search search is empty, then our P is empty, then by terminating condition, we jump out of the loop and return M. We're now going to analyse the runtime complexity of the graph. The first and last line run in constant time. Each loop has two stages to it. The breadth first search uses all edges at most once, so time complexity is big O of E. For the depth first search, since the vertices and edges are deleted once used, all edges are used at most once, so time complexity is also bigger of E. So overall, each iteration is linear with the number of edges. Now to calculate the number of loop iterations. Breadth first search terminates when it reaches the first free vertex. Therefore, there is no shorter path to a free vertex. Therefore, in subsequent iterations, a shorter path cannot be found. Once it terminates, it collects all free vertex on that level, so all possible paths of that length are found. Therefore, in subsequent iterations, the paths must be longer. Since the paths alternate between matched and unmatched edges, and free vertices cannot be connected to a matched edge, then in subsequent iterations, the paths must be at least two edges longer. After root v iterations, the minimum path length would therefore be 2 root v. Since in the set P, the paths are vertex disjoint, and there are only v vertices in the graph, then there can only be half root v paths left. Since each iteration adds at least one new path, else the loop would terminate, the maximum number of remaining iterations in that loop is half root v. Therefore, after root v iterations, only a half root v more are needed, so the loop will terminate after 3 over 2 root v repeats. Looking back at the whole algorithm, we remember that the first and last statements are constant time. Inside the loop is linear with e, and loop is going to be ran root v times. If we add all this up, we get that the this will run in big O of E root V.